Christmas. If so, do let me know how you got on. I was off social media for 10 days and then my phone was, I would say, off every other day because my mum had really, really bad flu over Christmas. So um, I was just like checking in and the best way to do that was via WhatsApp. So I'm happy to say that she is finally making a recovery now. It was very, very intense for her. Obviously quite scary times because the NHS is um, really, really struggling at the moment. There are loads and loads of delays about when you potentially might get an appointment, even if it's an emergency. For example, she went actually to A&E, um, I think in November, and she had to wait 10 hours. She's doing better now, which is brilliant and a relief. I had a really, really lovely festive break. I managed to really, really switch off. I spent lots of time with Max and also my sister, which was really nice. Getting to properly hang out with my sister is always a joy. It is, I don't know what time it is, it's probably about 8.30 now. I am getting ready to go to an event with eBay, which is in London. It's a, a place called Carousel on Charlotte Street, which is actually a funny coincidence because Max did a pop-up um, residency there at the end of last year. He was one of their resident chefs in residence. So um, I am familiar with the space and I think it's, I think their concept is really cool. So I'm looking forward to the event today. finishing off getting ready and wanted to show you what I'm wearing. This is just a Lucy and Yak tee from a couple of years ago. This cashmere jumper which I thrifted from a charity shop quite a few years ago now as well. Same for the second hand suit. I got this quite a while ago and I just don't wear it enough. Got these kind of chunky cable knit socks. I want to say they're originally from Marnie. But I got them second hand and then platforms which you've seen a million times before second hand as well. I'm stealing Max's bag. Not only do I think it's very cute, it's highly functional. It's just so like, pew, I'm ready for a train journey. And then for warmth, I'm gonna wear this Camilla Bloom, which is just so beautiful. Also this hat. Oh wait, I got these from a small brand, I think called Handmade Me. I will link her stuff down below, but very sadly, I think she is just closing her business, which keeps happening to small and sustainable brands at the moment. And it is just so heartbreaking to see so many of them struggling. Some of my favorite, favorite brands have recently closed. Hara the label have closed. Birdsong recently kind of ended the, the clothing side of their business. They're gonna go into printmaking, but it's just so sad, so, so sad. Speaking of eBay, my keyboard recently completely stopped working and so I've just bought a new one from eBay and I'm praying it works. Wish me luck.
From London where well, I didn't just get back I got back a little while ago had a shower oh my gosh put on some clean clothes I wanted to say clean and dry because it's been raining a lot outside and now I'm just cooking up some dinner I've got some mushrooms on the go I've just chopped up some tempeh I'm just gonna bring things together and I'll show you as we go I'm just gonna add some tamari to the mushrooms and tempeh also gonna add some oil. Uh, movie and just take it really easy. but the beauty of having dinners by yourself is that you can do what you want with them Government action to build more houses and back again after eating that delicious dinner it was actually really nice when i'm cooking by myself especially you know when i just want to eat quite quickly i like having an element that is ready to go so in this case, that was the gnocchi, which is literally takes a minute to cook. And I just like adding stuff. When people ask me if I cook, they're like, oh, can you cook? I just say, oh, I, I pull things together, which I think is much more accurate. Anyway, I did want to talk to you about the event that I went to today. It was to celebrate eBay's continued partnership with Love Island. In this season, they're reusing lots of the pre-love pieces from the last season. So hopefully we'll see pieces that if we watched last year's or last summer's season will pop up again and interestingly they're not styled they have like one shared wardrobe that they all pick and choose from and they are allowed to bring their own pieces and style their own pieces if they want as well i know a lot of people have a lot of things to say about love island but i think we cannot underestimate just how influential it is in terms of our culture over here in the uk and actually the show is pretty big worldwide now. I have recommended this before, but I would really recommend the Unreal podcast uh, with Shirin Kale and Pandora Sykes if you wanna take a deeper dive into Love Island and reality TV. It's such a brilliant listen. And the other reason why I'm excited about Love Island this season is because it's being hosted by Maya Jama, who I love, I think she's awesome. So um, I'm excited to see her take the presenting reins on the show. I did want to show you a couple of chocolate bars that I picked up from London because I can't go to London and not pick up chocolate. Apparently it's my thing. Who Kitchen Salty, really, really like this one. And then I also got the almond butter crispy quinoa one. They were both on 20% off, so it would have been rude not to. Oh, I meant to get an almond butter cup. I also got a peanut butter cup, but I meant to get an almond butter cup. Clearly I was really in the mood for nut butter today. Oh yeah. And then I also got these. I literally just saw peanut butter and I was like, they sound great, whatever they are. And I was kind of disappointed. They're basically like buttons made out of peanut butter, but they weren't a vibe for me. Anyway, I'm now going to watch some telly and attempt to have an early night and I will see you tomorrow. Bye. Good morning. I did not do any filming yesterday, despite the best of intentions. Woke up yesterday morning, was doing a workout, halfway through my period came, and I was like, oh, that's why I've been anxious, distracted, a bit all over the shop, not feeling entirely present in myself. Oh, that's why. I spent most of the day wearing my wearable hot water bottle and slumped on the sofa. That was my day. And I spent way too much time on social media yesterday. Too many TikTok holes to mention. So, this morning I woke up and I was like, right, no social media holes today. Let's hope. None so far. I've just done my hair. I'm 
in the process of doing my hair. I might put on some makeup. I just wanna get dressed up for myself today. Yesterday I was very much sad, anxious, and hormonal girl. It's not gonna happen again today. Some makeup. I was on um, Pinterest and I found this picture of Kate Moss with blue eyeshadow. Now listen, I don't think I ever suited blue eyeshadow and I'm quite haunted from my dancing days when it was all blue eyeshadow and bright red lipstick. But I just think this is very, very cool. And because of this palette that Urban Decay very, very kindly sent me. There are all these gorge, like truly stunning blue colors at the end of the palette. And so I've just been thinking, how can I use them? She's actually got some green in there as well. Oh gosh, wish me luck. I actually put my fringe back up in a roller just to keep it out of the way. Are we doing it? We're doing it. Hey, what's the worst that can happen, right? I hate it. It just doesn't suit my colouring. I hate it. Well, the under eye isn't bad. Maybe with some mascara it will be fine. Oh my God, I think I actually do look like a 10 year old who's found their mum's makeup bag. There's only one Kate Moss. I'm just out here praying that the mascara is gonna save it. Oh dear. Maybe it'd be better when my hair's down. Oh, hun. Oh, hun. I'm never gonna do this again. The palette itself is absolutely lovely, but blue is just not my makeup color. And now we know for certain, blue eyeshadow has never been, nor will it ever be, my color. I've constructed an outfit that I'm actually very happy with. This skirt I got from Topshop many 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 years ago and then underneath i just have a plain black body that i got from 90 percent you will recognize my vintage t-shirt this is my pink floyd vintage t-shirt i didn't like the pattern the pattern was just too much with the eyeliner i looked like i was like off to my first ever rock concert and it just wasn't a vibe so i flipped it inside out and then what i do is i just flip up to the desired length and then I do a little twist and just tucked it into my belt. But you can use a shoelace and tie the shoelace at the back. Um, there are multiple ways of like getting a desired length of t-shirt without buying more t-shirts than you necessarily need. And then I have some tights on for warmth, but it will probably look better without tights. The internet always has a really bad habit of shouting at me when I don't wear tights. So please don't shout at me for not wearing tights. Navy cord shirt that I thrifted in a charity shop for Max, oh, maybe three or four, three years ago now. And we just share it. This is a really lovely layering piece. I have his coat, which he bought secondhand for I think 30 pounds and it is amazing. Do we know how to pronounce that? Jaeger, like Jaeger bombs. I'm obsessed with this coat and I'm wearing it a lot at the moment, but yeah, it is Max's. The tights were kind of a vibe. Don't know if I like it with my little knees out. Yeah, okay, I'm happy. I'm in, in between filming, but I did want to chat to you about books because I read quite a bit over Christmas. The first book that I read, I don't actually have with me because I've swapped it with Lottie. I gave her Honey and Spice, which she absolutely loved. And, um, I also gave her Paul. Paul is a novel by Daisy Lafarge, who is a poet, and this is her first fiction novel. And she is a young English girl who goes traveling in the south of France, and she meets this guy called Paul, who is an older man, very early on in the book. And I have to say, I think this is just an outstanding debut. It is so beautifully written. It was recommended to me at the Toppings bookshop in Bath by someone who was working there because they knew that I loved Annie Lord's notes on Heartbreak and they were like, oh, you will love this. I have to say I did find it unbelievably compelling, really frustrating 
um, a little bit scary. It's about a highly manipulative man. I have a feeling that the majority of us have had experience of manipulative men, especially when we're young. And at points it was a difficult read, but it is just so, so brilliant. It's so, so subtle, but in the most perfect way. So if you are in the mood for something quite psychological about the power dynamics between men and women, I think you would enjoy Paul and I highly recommend it. The next book that I read is actually a very, very lovely press copy of Lauren Bravo's first fiction, Pre-Loved. I actually pre-ordered this, so I'm expecting my own um, proper copy to arrive in a couple of months. Lauren wrote How to Break Up with Fast Fashion, so she's extremely sustainably minded. Pre-Loved is Lauren's first fiction. I think it's coming out in April, and I absolutely loved 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 this it is about a woman called gwen who was in her late 30s and it's about a big relationship that she had and breaking up from that relationship and it's also about grief and mainly it's the story of stuff so gwen loses her job and she goes to work in a charity shop and in between each kind of narrative chapter there is a chapter about an object or an item that has ended up or is going to end up in a charity shop and if you are someone who imagines stories behind things and thinks about the life cycle of an item of clothing or an object household object whatever it is this is stunning and um, it will really make you think deeply about stuff which i obviously love and there's lots in there about clothes and more than anything it's a really wonderful story of a young woman who is just finding her way. This is definitely doing something a bit different um, in terms of how it's structured and also kind of like the wider meaning of it and how we, ch why we choose to take on certain things and how it's less about the thing itself but more the meaning we attach to it. And I just think that's, that's really, really important. I could say a lot about this book, um, but I don't want to say too much. I just really want to recommend it, I think you will really, really, really love it. And I'm conscious that my memory card only has three minutes left to go in it. The only fiction that I read over the Christmas holiday was The Gospel of Wellness, which is by Rena Raphael, who is an incredible journalist. I am so excited to say that I'm interviewing her next week to be on All The Small Things, and I can't wait for you to hear the episode. Rena takes a deep dive into gyms, gurus, goop, and the false promise of self-care. And there is so much to unpack in this book. It's so nuanced, it's so well-researched. Rena was fully taken on board by, by wellness and she doesn't necessarily think it's always a bad thing, but that's the beauty of this book. She really, really takes the deepest, most well-researched dive into everything to do with wellness. And I loved it. I am so excited to interview her and I can't wait for you to hear the conversation. And the final book that I read was Taylor Jenkins Reid's latest. This is Carrie Soto is back. I borrowed this from Lottie. And Lottie didn't enjoy it that much, I should say, because she's not like that into tennis. I love tennis. This is about a tennis player called Carrie Soto, who is hugely successful, wins all the tournaments, all the Grand Slams, and then retires. And then another woman is about to kind of take her position as the most decorated tennis player in history. And she comes back to try and regain that title. It's so fun. I love tennis. I love the game of tennis. Taylor Jenkins Reid, if you like her, I really do think you'll like this as well. Um, it doesn't disappoint. It's such a such a quick, fun page turner. Um, and different, slightly differently to the other Taylor Jenkins Reid's books that I've read, romance isn't like the main storyline in this. It's very much the sport. Romance does come into play, but sport is the main thing. I would say it's a, quite a feminist book. It's quite an intersectional feminist book as well, which is good to see. I really, really enjoyed this. Max loved it as well. So those are my recent reads and I would highly recommend all of them, including Paul, which you just have to imagine is here. Oh, and um, quickly before my camera runs out, this is what I'm reading next, Sorrow and Bliss by Meg Mason. I heard Vic Hope talk about this on the Bookshelfie podcast and I was like, yeah, this is a bit of me and Lottie loved it. So I've got Lottie's copy and I'm very excited to read it. Curry sauce. 
Yeah. Okay, my memory card is very much. Hello, good morning. It's the next day. Last night, my memory card was full. And so my camera cut out, I think at the point at which I was um, unwrapping my takeaway. And then I watched a film and then I was falling asleep on the sofa. So I got myself into bed and started Sorrow and Bliss. And I've only read the first couple of pages. How many pages did I manage before I nodded off? I read the first 13 pages, but so good, so good. Within the first page I was in. So I'm really, really excited to read this. I also wanted to show you this, which is very cute. Um, earlier this week, I dropped around some chocolate cake to our neighbors and they have sent back some dates. And now our plan is just to send treats back and forth, which I think is very, very cute. Thank you for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.